Wake up. Yeah. Got my man Dave, got my man Dan. You know what time it is, and this is 2 6. Yeah. Ask us, we seat belts, boy. You better strap up. Conversations is controversy. It's time to act up. Carolina ballistics, where the precision's wicked. Tune in and listen. It get deep if you dig it. No reason to act tough. Carolina ballistics training academy. Uh, ain't no reason to act tough. So listen up. Hey guys, this is Dan. Sign up for classes, buy merch at carolinaballisticsta.net. That's carolinaballisticsta.net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? This is your man, Daniel Irwin. Welcome back to Carolina Ballistics and Training Academy presents the Dan and Dave Show. Welcome back. I'm your host, Daniel Irwin, our man of the hour. Who's going to be guest hosting with us is Mr. Sean Neville. And we got a special guest for you guys today. President of the Flat Earth Society himself, the one and only Mr. Mark Sargent, my main man. What's up, brother? <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And by the way, I am not pres. Okay, first off, I'm not president of anything, uh-huh. uh, nor, nor am I mayor or king. <laughs> I, I consider myself a flat earth recruiter at best. I love it. Because you, I'm usually the, the guy you hear about before you get into flat earth. I'm, I'm like year one of, <laughs> of, of, of flat earth. So I'm old school. However, the other the other thing is like uh, we don't really have anything to do with the flat Earth Society. We're really okay. just uh, um, flat Earth two point oh. We're social media oh, wow. flat Earth. Flat Earth yeah. Society was there a long time before us, and they weren't doing anything, wow. so we had to kind of take over. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, at Mark, so you went a little bit a little bit about yourself. Um, would you mind giving us a little bit more of an introduction of what got you in this movement of flat Earthers? Sure, sure. So uh, I've I've been in probably well longer longer than most people. So in 2014, summer of 2014, I had basically run out of conspiracies to look at. I I, I was conspiracy bored. I, I was sitting there in the summer of 2014. It's like, what is there anything else to look? Kind of like what people are doing with Netflix now. <laughs> it's like it's like is there anything coming from North Korea that I haven't seen? Um, so I, I ran out of things to, to look at and everybody knows if you, if you're into conspiracies at all, uh, about flat earth, that it, it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. Why would you ever look at it? It's ridiculous. So I thought, well, I'm not getting any younger. So I think I'll just tick this one off my bucket list and I'll, I'll spend a, um, uh, a weekend just knocking it out because how, how hard could it be? And that yeah. weekend turned into weeks, which turned into months. And next thing you know, at the beginning of 2015, I had given up. I, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going about this all wrong. So I woke up in the middle of the night and said, I'm going to go, go the other direction. I'm going to, I'm going to tell the internet it's flat and see yeah. what happens. And so I, I made a series of videos called the flat earth clues and which was basically just a cry for help wow. and, and put all my contact information out there, which you're never, ever supposed to do ever. <laughs> in fact, you know, so here's my name, my real address, my phone number, everything oh, you possibly <laughs> about me that's that's a great idea this is absolutely wow. what you want to do and people started contacting me and saying wow. yeah man it's not nuts here's why and yeah. uh that was that was eight years ago and wow. now here we are a whole bunch of stuff later and it has been it's been a heck of a ride wow 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 i think the the big question um that a lot of people have when it comes to the flat earth movement um and the 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 concept that the earth isn't round that we're so right. constantly uh fed since you know we're, we're children um right. is that who would actually benefit from the world being round and how, how would anybody benefit from from hiding the fact that the world is flat right and and i i have to apologize to your listeners in advance if, if they didn't know what the show was about it coming in because a lot of people are like so <laughs> So is this an April? Is this, is this April first? Is this a rerun or something? Because no. they're not actually talking about flat Earth, right? Definitely. And but that kind of ties into your question, which is yeah. why why would you hide something like that? And honestly, I don't think the powers that be wanted to hide it. Which was, you know, if if it's not a globe, you know, it, uh, I've got a little globe right here. So if it's not this, right? It's not this little spinning ball that's spinning around like that. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's something like a like a snow globe, a building. Right? Wow. Something looks like. like that 
Mm, then, wow. Um, that's the one I, I use on press things. It was built, it was built especially <laughs> for me by Chris Pontius so that he wow. goes, he goes, you need a small thing to hold in front of the camera. Whenever, whenever you're sitting down with people, it's like, okay, thank you. So, <laughs> So if you're living in a snow globe and they did the, the, the biggest problem was they didn't find out about it until about almost 1960, meaning that everything was almost done. You know, the civilization had already been set up. And so the question isn't isn't who benefits from hiding it. Think of it like this. If you're the powers that be, I don't, I don't care what what name you want to put on them, the Illuminati, the trilaterals, the, the Masons, the Vatican, whatever. If you're the powers that be and you don't figure out till about 1960 that this is really what the world looks like that you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling like a snow globe yeah do you tell people no no you can't you, you the, the information is power and is one of the most powerful pieces of information that's out there which is you are it, it benefits you in that you have more to lose than you have to gain now could there be money made sure but they also gave away a whole bunch of money to to keep this thing hidden they burned through yeah. a lot of cash so yeah. think of the, the, this way think of what could go wrong if if this thing if you all of a sudden announce this to the world um three three parts uh first part is acad or um academically every university in the world uh as astronomy and astrophysics they're gone for a long time you don't even know what to do with those things and then yeah. remaining physical sciences uh archaeology hydrology biology anything with anology yeah. has to be rebuilt the libraries would have to be emptied and, and refilled and that's just that's just the the academic site economically you'd have to shut down all the stock markets for months until you figure out what was going on but the biggest one's religion believe it or not um you're giving the five major religious houses of this world um judaism hinduism buddhism islam christianity all leverage against science simultaneously and you're telling them to show restraint and that's a short illuminati meeting right wow. so you, you it's like oh what could go wrong and then somebody stands up and lists those things off right and the guy at the end of the table you know usually smoking he's like yeah so we're not telling anybody <laughs> until we, can figure out, we can figure out what to do with it and i don't blame them the public yeah. was not ready for this in 1960. you you did yeah. not have enough control of the information now here we are in 2023 you've got six billion smartphones um, high speed internet, uh, social media. I mean, you can, you could push a narrative out anywhere in the world, almost instantaneously within, yeah. within minutes, you can, you can spin just about any story you want, which is why I think it's getting out there. It's being yeah. allowed to go out. We, they could have stunted us so many times when we started doing this. So there you wow. go. It's not what they have to gain. It's what they have to lose. And, 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 and in the future, it's like, can we turn this into our advantage one day? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. So, but again, there's nothing. There's nothing gained by telling the public in 1960. Nothing, absolutely. In fact, you you have the chance to lose it all if you tell them in 1960. So hold on to that information, and then maybe it's like maybe we'll figure it out eventually. Here we are, decades later. Hmm. There you go. So, Mark, I just, I just like following up on that question because that's something I'm very intrigued about. It was one that I uh, <laughs> the first thing that I thought about because you know. You were talking about conspiracies earlier. When we look yeah. at most conspiracies, we can pretty much see a direct line. You know, you look at 9-11 conspiracies, who would benefit by staging, you know, 9-11? Well, you can, you can form a very direct line to a whole lot of stuff that happened. And we can yeah. see instantly, you know, who, who it is to benefit. So when it comes to this, I think, uh, I know, like, my, my question, my curiosity is... Uh, to a point, people thought for most of humanity that the world was flat. Right. So then we, you know, then we go to the earth being around or a sphere. Yep. And I understand what you're saying about holding things back, but wouldn't that be something that's really easy to flip into pretty much the greatest scientific achievement of the 20th century? Yes and no. I also believe, and that's a good point. I, thank you for bringing that up. Then anyone could go into Google and type in ancient cosmology and click on the image button. And you'll notice that just about every culture that ever was drew the same thing, right? Everybody drew a snow globe and everybody knew this. However, that was a long time ago. Uh, the, you know, we're pushing, you know, 600 years, a thousand years. Most people couldn't even read and write back then, but they all had the, the, the philosophers of the day. They all had the, the same concept at some point. 500 years ago, they decided to change that. And I think it was partially because they, um, 
they didn't they they wanted to control the information the people so you hold on to it because you're afraid meaning um back then you you turn it into the globe and get rid of the fence and if you listen to my clues i i talked about this where people are really great unless they find a barrier in front of them right they they find a, a fence uh which is the 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 analogy i give is the uh, the wildlife preserve right you can put a couple buffalo in a thousand acre wildlife preserve and they don't care about the fence. You know, they're just gonna be walking around. They're fine. They're, they'll be happy as, as clam. You can put a dozen people in that same thousand acres. All they're gonna care about is the fence, because human beings, you know, they don't like. They only be constrained. It's like, why is the fence there? Who built the fence? What's on the other side of the fence? Have we angered the fence and the gods that you know that control the fence? Maybe we should sacrifice some things. Hey, get those buffalo over here. We're gonna kill them. Hmm. So, because what happens is eventually technology wise one because remember we didn't even have good exploration tools really until the, the the 1900s you know the and by that i mean until the internal combustion engine was created what'd you have you had steam powered ships you had some trains but that that was basically it so i think the concern was once exploration became cheap for the average person there was going to be and if the old stories were true a lot of people would be like hey Hey, what about that fence I kept hearing about for, you know, that my grandfather told me about a long time ago. And then you've got people that are just going to be heading for the fence. So what's the easiest, what the best way to get rid of it? Well, you just tell people there is no fence. Oh, no, no. You're living on a globe <laughs> fence. That, that's just, that's just a myth. We, we don't, we don't care about, we don't care about the fence anymore. So you hide it as best you can. And then now, you know, but, but even, but let's put it this way. When you turned it into a globe, you still didn't know for sure. Right. You had to make up a story, but you still didn't know for sure because even you didn't have the technology to discover it until about 1960 until you until you could actually go out there yourself and, and find out, you know, the outer marker and then seal off Antarctica for old time for all time. Mm. You didn't know. Does that kind of answer it for you? OK, I think I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. But I, but I, but I also do. I'm going to give credit to God on this one because God allowed it to be turned into a globe. But, you know, he could have, he could have stopped it at any point. I think, I think we, part of the reason we're here is to, you know, for, for not necessarily God's amusement. I think God learns a lot through us, uh, but is to act naturally and you can't act naturally if you know where you are, right? It's kind of like being, you know, like when you're being f filmed, right? People, people act completely differently when they don't think they're being recorded, right? And, yeah. you know, so all of a sudden the cameras are on and people, people, it was the old joke when people got them, like news cameras on them, they would just freak out. Everyone would be smiling. It's like the camera, I mean, really? So I, I, the, the old biblical story I like to throw at people is the, uh, the Tower of Babel. One of the, one of my favorite short, short stories, one of the shortest stories ever, but it's so powerful in that uh, from Genesis, the first civilization that was ever built was perfect too perfect as a matter of fact they were unified they were focused they were driven but worst of all they knew where they were immediately hmm. and this is like oh which is why the tower of babel was going to be built this is, and again tower of babel makes no sense on a globe right it's just yeah, me, and and, uh, me and sean were actually talking on that um uh, a couple months ago about uh um um the structure that was going to be built to the to the heavens yeah yeah it, yeah, it makes uh, it makes no sense unless you're building it in something like this yeah. And if you're building it inside a in, inside a building, all you're trying to do is reach the ceiling. And it, it gets a great story. So of course that's what you would do. If you had the engineering technology, if you were that civilization, and the worst part, again, the, the how the story goes is God looks down, it's like, uh nuts. Well, <laughs> we can't let this happen because they're gonna make it. And you so know what it was, was um what's interesting with along with that line of thought, um, yeah. is uh one of the more popular ideas in connection with um, the reason why flat earthers believe what they believe is because um, it all derives from a form of sun worship um, sure. in, con in connection with the, su uh, the sun being um, the, the center of our, of our universe or our right. existence. Right. Um, I thought that was really, really interesting and in how it kind of feeds along with, um, with, um, I guess uh, a narrative that is that is being pushed. What do you uh, what do you think about that? Uh, that sun worship is tied to our community in, in general, or that sun worship how it just happened naturally. 
Yeah, yeah, basically how it happened naturally. Well, I mean, think about this. For me, everything in the sky is just part of a giant, heavily ornamental clock that mm. predates language. That's all it is. I mean, before we could read and write the 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 stars and everything, the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon, uh, they showed us wh where to go. You know, when to plant crops, what what time of the year it was, and so on and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. And when it, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, we're we're hardwired. The the sun is the brightest thing in the sky. It brings warmth. It keeps you alive in certain situations. You know, it, it you know before fire, it was it was your only real source of light. So sun worship was a very, very natural thing. Um, the, the Egyptians, big on sun worship. Huge. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, in that sort of climate, why wouldn't you be? Yeah, uh, you know, you sure. You get sun all the freaking time. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in, which is interesting. You think that you'd get more moon worship, but nope, it's really sun or nothing. <laughs> it's just a focus on the sun. It is. It's really yeah. just a focus on the sun. I mean, yeah, you, 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 so every once in a while you get somebody with Mars or Saturn or Jupiter and stuff like that, you know, and then the constellations. Uh, so how that, do uh flat earthers um um account for like daylight savings time and um uh, like the the daylight cycle oh uh, well yeah what, if you're gonna go along with that we'll, we'll we'll go with time zones as well um first off the again apologies for the people you know what i should probably back up a, a, a minute because the people who are listening it's like how does this work how does <laughs> how does this whole sun you know how yeah. does the whole okay so if you're living and again if you can't see the screen if you're living in a building right with yep. walls and a floor and a ceiling right and, and there's some sort of dome above you then the sun and the moon are inside here probably and they're really high up but they're very very small mm -hmm. so by you know they're not the sun isn't 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands of miles wide it's mm -hmm. really tiny i mean maybe 50 to 70 miles wide I don't know, a couple thousand miles up maybe give or take we don't know not for sure mm -hmm. we don't know everything and the moon is basically the same so the moon it's not two thousand miles wide it's 57 miles you know and and it's up about the same so it's really like 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 a mobile above a child's crib very mm -hmm. very tiny by comparison by fact by the way so small that you couldn't even if they were on this right here you wouldn't even be able to see them if they weren't if they weren't lit up wow meaning which is one of the, one of our biggest problems when you're when you see when you type in flat earth and you click on images in google one of the biggest problems is the sun is monstrous in it. I mean, it's thousands and thousands of miles wide inside. It's like, yeah, because we have to, the only way we can, you could even see it on there is we have to draw it. We have to oversize it because from, from your standpoint, it would barely be even a, a, a pinhead. It would be a, a, the size of a pixel. So as far as daylight savings and the sun, you know, traveling different paths across the sky, like it is now, you know, traveling a different path than it was in the summer. It's no different than a, a needle on a record player. Right. Wow. So every every time around, it takes a slightly different path. Wow. Does that answer the question? The the biggest problem we have uh, the, of the flat Earth, the, which I'm really surprised more people don't bring it up, is the um, 24 hour sun in the, the North Pole, which would be the center. That's easy. That's a piece of cake. 24 hours in Antarctica. Not so easy. That's that's kind of tough to do without some sort of second light source. So yeah. still working on that one. Yeah. So um, explain a little bit about the the size of the sun and the moon. Um, sure. I think that's the one that a lot of people kind of get stumped on when it comes to the flat earther conversation. Sure. Think about it like this. For, first off, notice the the when it comes to astronomy, the, the real weird coincidences that most people they think about it a little bit, but they don't. They, they, it's, it's tough for them to get their head around. First off is let's look at the moon which is, again, science just says, oh, it's just a coincidence. You only see one side of the moon, exactly one side of the moon. In fact, you think, you know, because the moon's supposedly rotating too, right? No, it doesn't yeah. rotate at all. It's completely locked in to the Earth rotation if you leave science. It doesn't even change a quarter of a degree in 100 years. That's that's unheard of. That's, that's yeah. really, really weird. So, but when it, the other thing is, the, the biggest coincidence is that the moon is... 40 times closer than the sun but it's also 40 times more narrow than the sun so oh, when wow. so it fits it when an eclipse happens it fits exactly in front of the sun it's like wow that is a coincidence that's yeah. how an eclipse happens right it's not like the moon is oversized and gets in front of no it's exactly the same size when you know perspective wise that's what science says for us it's like no no they're the same freaking size that's mm -hmm. how it would be designed it, 
So for me, the, the sun and the moon aren't that much of a mystery. Um, I'll throw one more little thing for you, which is mm -hmm. the, um, the moon. If you look at the moon, the craters are all circles, right? Which means it's coming in straight down. It's coming in at a 90 degree angle, you know, st straight down. It's like, wow, all of them came in at 90 degree angles. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how does that happen? And none of the others, it's almost like the moon was decorated with craters. Wow. And, and I don't know if it was, I don't think it was lazy necessarily. I, mean, I would never accuse God of being lazy, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that it might've been thrown out there as a breadcrumb, which is wow. you'd think well, if, a, if a big rock was heading towards the moon, that it would, you know, the earth's gravitational pull would skew the path of, of the asteroid or the meteor. Nope. Yeah. No, nope, apparently not. But anyway. Oh, wow. Go ahead. Sean, did, what were you about to say? Oh, when I think about all that stuff, and again, I guess I'm the, <laughs> I guess I'm bit good to be the devil's advocate today, which, sure, you know, that's ahead. always fun. I don't mind. But one of the things, especially if the sun and the moon are positioned like that, yeah. how, do, how do you account for how wildly inconsistent something like polar night is? Because... The whole point of polar night is that, you know, there's a 23 hour, you know, 23 hour darkness to 22 hour darkness, polar right, days right, right. being 22 or 23 hour. Right. And from a rounder theory, it's pretty easy to tell because even though we have a consistent, you know, we have a consistent rotation and a consistent sure. back and forth on axis at any time during the year, it's, it's never exact. Sure. And so the entirety of the explanation that seems plausible about the fact that polar nights, you know, they do exist, is that inconsistency that comes from the Earth being a sphere. How would you account for that if the Earth is flat? Because right. if the sun's that close, the moon is that close, and the cycle is so much smaller than we would think, then right. to me at least it seems that, you know, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have polar night or polar day because it doesn't even happen every year if there's enough tilt on the axis. It it just doesn't happen in those same regions. All right. When it comes to polar night, when you say polar night, I'm I'm going to guess that you are talking about the North Pole, which is fine. We're, when it comes to the North Pole, polar night is easy. Again, if there if there's only one light source. When it comes to the Antarctic polar night or or polar day, that again that part's tougher if you're only using one light source. But to back up just a sec, everything up there from from our standpoint everything up there is just a projection nothing more it's no different and i know i don't know where the, the nearest wh what city are you guys next to you're in los angeles or in california yeah i'm in seaside seaside uh california okay. all right so the, the there's there's there i know there's some planetariums around you and i know there's no reason to really go to a planetarium but if you go to a planetarium for example you know once your eyes are adjusted and you're looking up this up up at the ceiling Everything in there, of course, is just an illusion. Does the, like, for example, on a really good planetarium, does the moon look spherical, for example? Yes. Yes, it does. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just lights on a ceiling. Same thing with Jupiter. I have people said, oh, I've seen the moons of Jupiter from my house, right? And I say, well, okay, fine. Go to a planetarium. Take a pair of binoculars. Can you see the moons of Jupiter from inside a planetarium? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I can. Are they spherical? You know, oh, they look spherical. Yeah. Can you land on them? No. Why? Because they're just lights on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments I throw at people is, again, how human beings are easy. It's almost like we're just being designed to believe the illusion in that if you took an, you guys know what Amish people are, right? You know, yeah, the, the, sure. The, yeah. Wear all the black and they don't do any Western technology. They don't use power mm -hmm. or anything like that. If you took one of those guys, a pure Amish person, right, that's never seen modern technology, you blindfolded him and brought him to a planetarium took off that blindfold, he'd freak out. He'd be like, what is happening? Why is it dark? Why is the moon moving so fast? And so on and so on. And that's, look, that's just, that's just old school technology that we came up with. Imagine what you could do. In, well, sorry, let me, let me preface it with this. We had nothing to do with the building of this place, right? If, if this is, if you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, we didn't build it. We don't know who did, although I suspect, yes, of course, you could say it's either a civilization much older than ourselves or God. Uh, but at that point, then you're kind of splitting hairs because, you know, did God subcontract out the work or did, you know, or did he build it personally? Not sure. So to answer your question, when it comes to the, the northern night, you know, the polar night or the polar or the 24 hour day, 
get North Pole piece of cake. We can do that all day long. That that's easy to do on a flat world. The Antarctic side, not so easy because there's a set. There's got to be a second light source involved, or that there, or there's no 24 hour sun. But I've talked to enough people, people I trust, that say that there's a 24 hour sun in Antarctica. So if that's the case, all right, then there's a there's a second second light source somewhere. Remember, the whole wow. place was designed to keep us from figuring it out. So it's pretty tricky. Wow. Yeah, you know, the only pushback I would have there is you can go way d- down south from the North Pole. You know, I mean, still in the Northern Hemisphere, but you go to Norway, you know, parts of Russia, as far down as Alaska, and right. you still have polar night. But what's interesting, again, where that where that inconsistency in the Earth's rotation comes from is the fact that you don't have polar night for the vast majority of somewhere like Canada, which is higher, higher in elevation, closer to the North Pole, but you do have it in in Alaska. But again, that's something that science has accounted for because of the curvature of the Earth and the tilt on the axis. So those are the kind of things that you know that that I think that I think about when I when I think about it. That if we've accounted for it this way, how do we how right. do we account for that being incorrect? And- and that is absolutely natural for you to do that. My days are spent answering questions that, that go along those lines, which is, okay, I know that you, you believe the world is flat, but what about blank and how does blank work? Yeah. Constantly, the, I get those. So, again, you're still working through it. Hey, great. The fact that you're even asking questions is a happy thing for me. It's good. Sure. For sure. What's not happy, by the way, is I noticed you have. Is are those the the the, the Star Wars trilogies behind you? <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> did you just turn off your camera? I didn't. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, we switched back to Daniel. <laughs> Do I need to get that out of the shot of slices? No, no absolutely fine. not. I, I, <laughs> we are huge nerds. <laughs> we no, love no, Star no, Wars. No, no, okay, no. First off, I am a huge nerd. I am a huge sci-fi yeah. geek nerd. I could argue with you for an entire evening about who was the best Doctor Who, uh, or what was the best Star Trek movie. But when it comes to Star Wars, it's the original trilogy for me. And then when Ryan Johnson did the the um, the Last Jedi. I, I I stopped watching Star Wars, and because, oh, of, man, because of that one man, I will not order Disney Plus. I will not. Do it. You time. you won't get any disagreement from me. I mean, <laughs> just I just to be honest, <laughs> of I, all I, the things I, things I can play devil's advocate about today, that ain't it. <laughs> I went to all the prequels in the theater. Um, you know the 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 second three, and then the the last three. Oh my God, it was just oh. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Wait, well, Keep, keep going. What else you got? You know, um, <laughs> what I really appreciate in connection with um, the community of Flat Earthers is that um, I think one of the greatest trademarks of scientists in general is the ability to question um, through scientific method um, yeah. their reality. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I think me and my wife, we had just watched a documentary on a guy who literally had made it his life goal to shoot his self-made rocket into space I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> to, um, to, to prove the yeah matt wait there was there's a document there's a document oh right the mad the mad mike hughes documentary yeah 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 yeah, yeah, I knew yeah, that guy. yeah. yeah. and i oh that's awesome but yeah um we thought that was so cool like anybody that i feel that is using a scientific method um and that is actively challenging um what we consider to be factual um right. in my opinion is a scientist you know what i'm saying yeah. so and, and i think that um a lot of the uh, people in the uh you know collegiate science uh scientific world um yeah. they kind of push flat earthers away and i'm like you got this whole community of thinkers and challengers um that are right there and though they may not necessarily align with you know what is popular in uh, yeah. the scientific community, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, but you still got this community of, of people that are are trying to find out, you know, the truth. There, I think that's really it, really cool. It is cool. Um, we everybody, you know, tries the the scientific method numbers of times during their life without even knowing yeah. it, right? Test, observe, repeat. You know, how, how many times do you guys do it when you're when you're shooting? 
it happens all the time. It's like, you know, you, yeah. you, you, you run it, you, know, you come up with an idea, you test it, you repeat it until your original idea is modified. It's like, oh, okay, well, this, if I do this, this is going to happen. Yeah. Um, when it comes to science, you know, the pure scientific community, it is difficult for them because the foundation that everything that they were built on revolves around, no play on words there, the globe. Yeah. Yeah. And that is uh, every so many d different scientific disciplines are built on the globe. So you challenging that and saying, yeah, so it's probably not a globe. Yeah. Really upsets them uh, because they, they, you know, you're, you're questioning for a lot of these people. In fact, I've said this many times. If you have a master's degree or higher in any almost anything, honestly, but a physical sure. science or higher, if you have a Ph.D. in anything, you won't even listen to us. The denial yeah. that kicks in will never go away. You can't. Yeah. You can't resolve it. It's like, because then it's like, how much money? How many years did I spend on school? And then all yeah. of a sudden, you're going to tell me that that it's not what I think it is. It yeah. really it, it it kicks in that um that whole five stages of acceptance thing. And yeah. I know a bunch of people that that cannot get past denial, yeah. which is and I and when I use when I find out what who they are, it's like, oh yeah, you get your master's degree and blah blah blah. Oh yeah, yeah. you're never coming. You know, you know, we, uh, you know, me and Sean, we talk a lot about like social manipulation and um, how um, I don't want to say like the cult mentality of society kind of blocks people's minds. And so, like, even if you were to show them the absolute truth, they still won't be able to, you know, to see it or accept no. it because you, nope. like their mind's eyes like, no, this is not, you know, the reality of the of the right. effect. Yeah, it, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, part of it's the Ash experiment, which I love so much, which is basically peer pressure. Oh, um, yeah. If you guys look it up, it's A-S-C-H, which is peer pressure. Beautiful. Social media nowadays, so powerful, yeah. so incredibly powerful. And nobody wants to stick out. I mean, it's the stuff that, you know, when I was growing up in high school, the old stuff, it's like you want to be part of the, the, the cool kids. You want to be part of your peer group. You don't yeah. want to color outside the lines. And I understand that, but yeah. at the same time, it's become dangerous. Uh, if you guys ever, um, I don't know how many documentaries you watch. If you've oh, never watched fake, fake, have you watched Fake Famous? Oh. I've seen that one. Yeah. Oh, have you seen yeah. Fake Famous? Seen Where they take, they take six <laughs> kids in Los Angeles to do a casting call and, and they decide they're going to make them media famous without doing anything. With basically they, oh, do, they, they, they do nothing. Oh, they just man. buy clicks and hits mm -hmm. and stuff. That 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 oh man, don't get started. Oh man, there's a couple Hollywood plants that drive me crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Atloff, I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh Lord. I'm that's the one thing that's gonna go by or watch. But it's it's powerful. Uh the social media and but at the same time, social media has really worked in our favor. It's part of the speech I'm giving for the um you guys should go, by the way. You should go to the conference next sure. month. Um uh it's in Vegas, uh, October twenty first and twenty second. Sure. Um, sure. which is, um, uh, seriously, if you guys want media passes, I can contact me. Yo, after the show. I think that's I can, straight I can, from Mark Sargent's mouth. <laughs> I, can, I think I can hook you up. I'm pretty sure I can. Um, but anyway, let me know afterwards. Seriously, if you guys, yeah. I think you, cause you guys would just drive out there. Yeah. And, and I am a little nervous that we are, we're doing this conference. This is the closest we've ever been to. Los Angeles, which is, as you know, the highest concentration of social media in the world. Oh, yeah. And Everybody I'm, I'm here little... is social media influencers. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how we, that's how, that's why I'm talking to you right now. That's, it's <laughs> how, it, it, no, seriously, it's how, it's how it happened, which yeah. was once I put these, I, what I did was when I, when I made my Flat Earth Clues, I made them Creative Commons license. So wow. I said, basically, anybody can take them. Do, do what you yeah. want. Copyright be damned. I'm never going to throw a strike at you. Have fun yeah. with it. And next thing you know, people, uh, which is why I'm, quite, again, part of my speech, where which I'm saying the, the click chasers, the new generation of click chasers, the kids that are coming up. You probably saw the, the stat out there, which is um, one out of every three American kids, they their career, they want to be an influencer. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, it's like. I mean, that's not, that's not, that's scary numbers. It's like, what, yeah. how many millions of kids want to be social yeah. influencers? So they're all going to take a freaking stab at it. The problem is when you're so young, you have no content. I mean, you guys yeah. do, you, you guys do um, uh, tactical stuff. You've got content. You create, yeah. you create stuff out of nothing. The kids have nothing to do. So what they're going to do, what they do is they, re, they're um, content reporters. You know, they're reacting. You know, how many reaction videos out there? So many, so many reactions, you know. So yeah. kids react to flat earth. And so 
we whenever a new platform comes online flat earth just is out there because we've got eight years of content and kids wow. just do you know just grab bits and pieces because nobody copyrights anything wow so, wow yeah. wow yeah that's uh the, the 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 movement in connection with um uh like kids in connection i think a lot of it is because of like platforms like tiktok in which you literally have to do nothing yeah. um to 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 start trending you know what i'm saying you do yeah. a, a a trendy dance and you're getting thousands of views whereas like a lot of your actual content creators who actually take the time to develop content um yeah. to create a product you know what i'm saying a lot of those guys are you know they're str they're out there struggling <laughs> Yeah. That is yeah. and, and the kids and the kids want yeah the w people are drawn to the easy the easy fix mm -hmm. the easy money and not that tiktok pays a lot but nah, but yeah you're absolutely right it's like it's like why do i have to create content when i could just lip sync to something and do a little twirly dance and it's like yeah but but if you and your friends and Thousands, everybody you know is millions of that, views yeah and now and every week there's new there's more kids and more kids and more kids doing this yeah. there's going to be a burnout eventually because yeah. how how you, that, that you can't keep that sort of model up TikTok, uh, TikTok is is you know TikTok is interesting because i think i saw in a, a report maybe a year ago that it was saying because TikTok is a um it's a chinese uh operation um, right. And that, you know, China is a communist entity and its companies answer to the government of China. Right. There's a major concern that the Chinese government is using TikTok as a means to target American children. What do you uh, do you think that that idea has any merit or, or if there's any truth well, to that? Um, you know, I'll play I'll play black hat for a second. Um, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you? Would, wouldn't you, if that was the case, if you knew you yeah. had that sort of influence? I mean, come on, if you're you're an exec at TikTok, if I mean, if the government is already, isn't already infiltrated, the same thing happens over here, which is, you know, the government goes into, you know, the, people forget, and I, I don't know what the age range of your listeners is, people forget that the internet was a military backbone system. That, it started mm -hmm. out, it, it's That's just true. a bulletin board system for the military in case everything went to hell, right? And Talking then it's like... Yeah, yeah, that's all it was. It was just like a serious, and it's like, wow, we created this backbone. Maybe we should give it to the civilians. And what do you yep. think? They're not going to have access to absolutely everything along that backbone. Of course they are. Yeah. Um. Same thing with with TikTok. In fact, I am sure our government. There's this weird balancing act where our government is monitoring its data mining off of TikTok, right? But at the same time, they don't want China. You know, the Chinese influence. They don't want China to because, from what I understand, um, TikTok in China is very, very different. Yeah, than the yes. TikTok over here. Do they, don't, they don't really tolerate the uh, the little twirly dances and, and the, dumb, <laughs> the dumb things as much as we do. For yeah. us, the you know the entertainment comes first, and yeah. you know, the the first rule of media, which has never changed, which is give the people what they want. Yeah, and I don't know what the kids want. Oh, I just it's bad. Anyway. <laughs> it, it flips like the sun, man. It flips. <laughs> Let's yep. go. Yep. Yeah, and one of, one of the things they play on, too, I think that's a really big deal is that basically it's been tapped into that kids today, if you're under the age of 21, pretty much, you yep. have been raised as a dopamine addict. Yep. So for a lot of these kids, it's not even, you know, you think about how dangerous a substance dopamine is, you know, I was reading a study that said, you know, somebody over the age of, I think, 60 in their lifetime, if you measured the amount of dopamine their body secreted, it would be maybe a couple teaspoons. Right. Whereas today, it's closer to a cup over a <laughs> yeah. lifetime, which is an insane amount yeah. of the same exact, you know, the same exact thing that's released when we gamble yeah. or when yeah. we drink or when we do all of these things. And, you know, we give this to kids when they're four or five years old. Yeah. You know, so... We Kids are more addicted almost today to the attention than to the money. Absolutely. You know, even yeah. if you don't get paid, you know, they, they get a dopamine hit because like oh, Danny was saying, they get, views. you know, they get a thousand <laughs> views and they're like, oh, my God, yeah. people <laughs> like me. And it's the, the money from what I have seen. You're absolutely right. The money is secondary unless you reach a certain level. Right. Once, once you and you know who these guys mm -hmm. are, right? When you reach a certain level, then you are beholden. Then, then they start feel, you know, they they start really watching the rules. 
because they want they don't want to be demonetized. Demonetization is yeah. a right. horrible word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But before that point, it's all about the hits. You know, literally the hits we, where people, yeah, mm -hmm. they get super thrilled. And and as you know, the old stories is like you can read twenty great comments in a row. You're wonderful. You're great. And then that one comment sticks out. It's like ruin him. Yep. You're really. You should, just, <laughs> you should just go into a barrel and and die. And it's like what? And and you focus on that. And kids, the their the raps right under the age of twenty one, under the age of twenty one, which would be young Gen Zers down. Yeah. Uh, I think the the Gen Alphas now are fourteen. Oh, the wow. um yeah i know right the um <laughs> you know, i'm getting old which is but but yeah they live or die off of it which is you know relationships are, are are rise and fall off of it the everything their world i mean i remember oh god lord 10 15 years ago when this whole thing started and i knew we were in trouble when i was sitting in a movie theater and the row in front of me was nothing but kids couldn't have been 16 17 years old and they're all on their phones doing you know click 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 nobody was talking and they were chatting with each other <laughs> Even though mm -hmm. they're right there, and I'm watching two of them, their elbows are touching, right? Yeah. I want to just smack them on top of the head. It's like, he's right there. Just <laughs> say something. <laughs> Why are you? That kind of goes him? to. He's sitting right That kind of goes to like what. Yeah, that kind of goes to what Elon Musk said a couple of years ago that pretty much we're all already cyborgs. Yeah. We just don't know it because of the fact that, you know, People today are so attached to their phone. Your entire life is in this piece of technology oh. that is glued to you that literally you can forget your wallet, your keys. You forget to put shoes on. You will not forget your phone. As boy, that's a good point. <laughs> and and two, two things there. One, as much as I hate that man for a number of reasons, <laughs> as much as I hate him because he is a he is a corporate puppet that he, yeah. you know, he all he has to do is open his mouth and, and headline. <laughs> They, they report literally every news organization. Yeah. If he says yeah. anything, he once twittered a period, right? Just a period. Went and it viral. Was went and, yeah, viral. It went, it, it, yeah, it went absolutely freaking viral. It's like, because people thought it was so deep and so mesmerizing. It's like, no, no, the man. Anyway, he, I, as much as I hate him, he is right about that. He, he's uh, right about that to where I, I went on a binge a couple months ago where I was watching them um, because I, you know, I've been running out of things to, to watch. I absorbed so much media. I never got married or had kids. So I've, I've absorbed a ton of media and I've been watching body cam vids, right? Mostly, um, uh, driving under the influence girls, right? They get pulled over. <laughs> you guys have never, if you guys have never spent an afternoon watching kids, you know, girls that are between 19 and, and 28 being pulled over, it's hilarious because of your point, which is once they know the cuffs are going on, there's only one thing that's on their mind, which is where's my phone? Where's my phone? Did you get wow. my phone? And, and the cops, unfortunately, nowadays, because they know it's like, yeah, 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 we're going to put the phone in the car. In wow. fact, one of them actually gave the phone to the girl while she was in the back seat. It's like, what wow. are you doing? I think she was like, like a VIP or something like that. Wow. But, wow. but, but that, but that <laughs> is their first thing. It's like, not call my family, not do this. It's like, not, not why I'm going to jail. Where's my phone? It's like, oh. So wow. red. So I'm again. I'm Gen X. So this thing right here, this this little phone, I I hate it. I hate it so much. And I, I whenever I can, I go places without it just to wow. prove a point. Because wow. when people, mm -hmm. you know, say, it's like I've been trying to text you. It's like, yeah, it sucks to be you because I don't have my phone with me. Yo, Mark, question. I, this is something that me and uh, Sean has actually been going back and forth on. What do you think about the moon landing? Do you think the moon landing happened? I'm going to do a Greta on you. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you bring that up? Okay. The moon landing was an absolute piece of crap <laughs> production from minute freaking one. And they got away with it because we didn't know any better back then. I am old yeah. enough to remember, well, barely remember the last mission. But, yeah. uh, but I'll, give you, I'll give you a couple quick things. Yeah. Which is... There's all sorts of photos out there uh, when it comes to the moon. But when I when I was doing overseas stuff before the pandemic, which is a whole other story for another day, mm -hmm. uh, when I was over there, I'd ask people. I'd say, I, I go, you know, in America, I get it, right? You know, we, why why do people in, in in the United States believe in the moon landing? It's like, well, because we you know we wave the flag, do 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 yep. do, right? And we, um, you know, the, the it's it's a pride thing. Dana Perino on Fox News. I love quoting her. She goes, I believe in the moon landings because I'm a patriot. 
It's like, hey. okay. <laughs> Okay, the translation there is, if you know what's good for you, if you live in the mm. U.S., whatever the government tells you, that's what's true. It's like, uh -huh. all, right, all right, that's totally yeah. fine. I go, so why are people, you in Sweden, uh, you know, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? And whether it's Swedish or Australian or, or South African or what, they always say the same thing, which is, I believe the, the Americans went to the moon because it was on television. And mm. the American media would never lie about something like that. <laughs> so yeah. I go, oh, God, are you serious? Man, I go, you uh, guys don't know up. us at all. <laughs> I go, we're we're all about the entertainment value. Um, there's a yeah. Mark Twain, there's a Mark Twain quote, and I'll get into the details of why I don't like the moon landing. Mark Twain quote, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Mm -hmm. Which is so very true when it came to the moon landing, which is they got away with production value on the moon because people wanted things to be true even yeah. though the physics didn't match up mm -hmm. meaning uh, I'll, I'll give you quick three quick examples and again i could i could send you a photo or two but you can look them up all day long look like mm -hmm. apollo 12 shots For, and i don't even care about the stars in the background i do mm -hmm. not care you know because <laughs> like there's no stars in ever there's not ever. one star yeah that's there's true not a single freaking star <laughs> and everybody says oh well it's an exposure setting okay yeah. fine it's a film camera if you want to say exposure settings i'll give you that one sure mm -hmm. why not i'll go since you said it's an exposure setting, wouldn't you take one roll of film and change the exposure setting so you could see the stars? But whatever, doesn't really matter. Artemis supposedly went to the moon and the the uh, Israel and India just supposedly went, not a single star. Nobody, <laughs> digital cameras now, 2023, there are no stars in space. Yeah, no, one wants, yeah. no one wants to talk about it, but whatever. People, and it's I, crazy because like, the, the, the value of our camera technology, like you could take your, take your smartphone out there and just- oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I go, look, there's tons of stars in I space. Def, we can I see def. them from here. But apparently the best cameras in the world can't see stars in space even now. And people say, people will still throw me as well as exposure settings going, dude, there's no film in the cameras anymore. It's all wow. digital. We've got yeah. better cameras that are they're better than our own eyes. Yeah. So don't give me that crap. Anyway, so forget about that. Um, three quick ones. Uh, one is, if you notice any of the shots, the shadows go in multiple directions. And if it's one light source, you know, from from the you know the sun, supposedly ninety three million miles away, then all the shadows will go in one direction, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, there's they're going in multiple directions because you're in a freaking studio. Wow, that, that's all there is. Um, there's no blast crater underneath the the the, the lander, even though it's ten thousand mm -hmm. pounds of thrust. You know, this thing sure. should have burned. By the way, I always thought it was really interesting that that there's an even four inches of ash across mm -hmm. the entire moon and nobody bothered to take a shovel and dig and see how deep the ash was they just knew <laughs> that it only went down four inches it's like really is there rock underneath there was were you can you anyone nobody dug a hole nobody dug a hole <laughs> well while they were doing the moon stuff um but the biggest thing for me the the thing that i put a challenge out there for was the um the 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 spacesuits that's yeah. the part that, that bugged me not even feats of strength by the way oh <laughs> Feats of strength. Let's let's throw that in really fast. Which is remember the moon supposedly one sixth Earth's gravity, right? So one hundred eighty mm -hmm. pound man weighs thirty pounds. Mm -hmm. Do you know what sort of vertical leap you could have if <laughs> you right now if you were one sixth your weight? And, and it's like I don't care if what the movie said about white men can't jump. They should be able to jump <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> right? They should be able to jump straight up. And and, and thirty pounds. These guys are athletic. They should be able to do it. They should be dunking yeah. like crazy. But yeah. no, there's, there's nothing. No, the big thing <laughs> was, was the spacesuit, which is um, if if you know anything, you can you can look this up on any platform, YouTube, whatever. Which is anything in a vacuum chamber, right? If you take, you know, because what we're breathing in here is nitrogen and oxygen, we just can't see it, right? Yeah. But if you take it out, then the pressure has to go somewhere. So if you put anything in a vacuum chamber, I don't care if it's a soccer ball or a football or a, a can of soda it just detonates because the pressure yeah. has to go get out right there's only one thing ever that doesn't act that way and that's the spacesuit for for the for mm. nasa it's like what do you mean a spacesuit if you put that in a vacuum chamber should turn immediately into a parade float right it should mm. just expand expand and the guy should just tip over and it should burst and he should die <laughs> and in fact any at the very least right he shouldn't be able to bend his arms. He should have no yeah. finger manipulation, yeah. right? And they're, they're they're poking up all sorts of fun electronics outside. Yeah, they're and but, like uh, if you look at the video, they're just like jumping around, falling over. I'm like, y'all oh. aren't worried to rip your suit. 
<laughs> you rip right. your suit, you're done. <laughs> Let me yeah, please, thank you, by the way. You're one of the few people that's ever brought that up. And I just drive insane, which yeah. is you're on the freaking moon and you're acting like it's no big deal. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I, get, I get that, you know, that the airline pilots, they, they're trained to talk about, you know, oh, we're yeah. cruising at 30,000 feet, blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. if you're at the moon, the only thing you care. Oh, you know one more thing? By the way, any of you trolls that might be listening, figure out this one for me. You know, I've listened to all the audio <laughs> from all the, the ground crews that were on the moon, right? Do you know what they ever, never, ever talked about? What? How, how much air they had left. <laughs> never brought it up. I have no <laughs> scuba divers and the scuba divers all i go what's the one thing all scuba divers do they they go we check our air constantly we're obsessive about it right there's a yeah. big air dial that you hold in front of you and it's like all you care about is how much air it's like oh we yeah. got eight minutes of air left we better start heading up none of these guys cared they had unlimited air it's like you think how far they were away from that capsule it's like yeah. hey, hey frank we have like 14 minutes of air left. Maybe we should start heading back. Nobody talked about it. No, get yeah. out of the golf clubs. Start hit some shots. Fall a rock. <laughs> and yeah, you're, you're to your point. If you fall on a sharp rock and you punch a hole in your suit, you're, you're done. done. You're done. You're absolutely freaking done. There is nothing they can do to help you. But yeah. the, the last thing they were ever going to do, which was, again, one of the reasons why, you'd, even if the moon was real, why you'd never send a person up there, is because you don't want to turn in the moon into a freaking headstone. Yeah. You just don't. Because then anytime it, it'd be depressing. And when anyone looked up there, it'd be like, those poor people. Right? <laughs> you know, like, a, like, like, like the whole mission crashes. And who's going to go get them? <laughs> yeah, right. right. There'd, be like this big, there'd be this memorial. It's like, oh, those poor Americans. Yeah, right? They're, they're, not, they're just going to be on the moon. It'll cost yeah. like, what, a billion dollars to go get them? They just yeah, leave them. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's <laughs> go get them. It's like, no, no, leave no man behind. It's like, hell with that. That's a billion dollars. Don't yeah. Only get for a price on human life, you absolutely can. So yeah, the, the whole a million dollars. Yeah, they they stay in there. We'll probably have a yeah. day for them or something. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Neil, no. Neil Armstrong. So, <laughs> so the, the and then they end the moon. So they do like six trips, round trips, and then yeah. 1972, they do this quick announcement. It's like, well, again, they're telling you, right? So they're like, well, the public really doesn't care anymore. Right? It's like no one's watching our moon footage. That's it. Good night, everybody. Roll credits, and that's it. 1972, they just shut it down, and then nobody goes back. The Chinese don't go. And by the way, nobody wanted to talk about the space race. Remember, that was a space race between the Soviet yeah. Union and us. It was like, yeah. who's going to get there first? And then all of a sudden, the Americans get there, and the Russians just quit. They just <laughs> shut it all down. That, that's never happened in the history of sports. Ever the first guy that you know crossed the finish line, the rest of us well, for sixty years. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody, nobody even tried nobody, anymore. <laughs> nobody even tried. After they that, dropped the mic and they were like, "That's it, we're done." And the whole world was like, "Yeah, we're done." <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. And I again, it was a, it was brilliant. In fact, and and the propaganda over the years. I even asked this one girl. Uh, she was Irish, and I go, "She was. A, you could tell she was a heavy, heavy science girl." Yeah. And she was a big girl to boot. But she goes, I go, what? Uh, I go, I go, so, you know, they, they haven't gone back in a long time, 60, 60 something years. I go, I go, when are they going? She goes, yeah. We're soon. We're going soon. Yeah. I was like, and she that look in her eye, this glazed over, like, yeah, you're believing, you're drinking the Kool Aid. You absolutely believe that they're going to keep this going. So, yeah. And, and, and Neil Tyson, even he even caught some pushback from some of his young young physics students these girls mm -hmm. where they you know he was talking about the moon moon missions and she and the girls were like yeah that was a thing wasn't it he's going what are you talking about it still is it's like really because <laughs> it's been a long time wow, yeah. wow. whatever whatever do you uh so so what do you so th they're talking about going back to the moon um <laughs> with artemis yeah <laughs> Yeah, in yeah, a couple of years. What do you uh, what do you think about that? Never, ever, ever gonna happen. Never <laughs> gonna happen. No, no, seriously, they 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 are hoping that the the war kicks off here pretty soon mm -hmm. because that they. In fact, I don't even think Artemis One was supposed to launch. I think the between the pandemic and the the European theater, mm -hmm. um, I I think it was it was never supposed to supposed to get off. So when when Artemis One launched, you know the, they 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 smudged up the footage as well as as great as possible, which was I really loved that that camera was supposedly fifty miles away from the moon, and it was absolutely some of the worst resolution I've ever seen in my life. 
Wow. And, and and it never got any better. It's like, no, no, we're shooting better footage from here. You're point blank range away from that moon. Um, yeah. So no, no. And then Artemis too. You saw that. That was the biggest fireworks show ever for a rocket. Mm-hmm. I mean, and 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 yet they still had the the crowd cheering. You know, when the wow. thing, it's like, what are you talking about? It blew up four minutes after liftoff. In fact, you didn't look <laughs> at that at all. And and you're treating it like, and they're saying, well, you know, you know, up, you know. Onward and upward. It's like, what are you talking about? You know how much money that cost? Yeah. You just blew that thing to hell. And the question yeah. is, was it even supposed to do anything? Or did they or you know, did they screw up the guidance on purpose just to drag their feet? Because no one's even talking about the, the relaunch anytime soon. <laughs> Sorry. Well, what, last let, last thing before we move on to our next thing, which is because yeah. I, I I gotta get this out there about Elon Musk. Yeah. I, because I know that that red team, you know, red team and blue team, red mm-hmm. team. I, I've even had my own family members say, "Oh, Elon Musk is a genius. He's what you know. He's the new. He's the new Tony Stark." And it's like, yeah, no. that I think no, that's no, the no, most he, common no. thing with Elon Musk right now is that they want to compare him to Iron Man. Oh, <laughs> everybody want to compare him to Iron Man. He is a freaking, <laughs> freaking puppet, and in fact, I will send you. Uh, hang on. I will send you a, a shot here really quick. Yeah. Uh, one, one second. I'll send you a shot. I, I send to people about Elon. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, he's just a stupid software guy that was groomed into the, um, where is this? He was groomed into this, into this thing that he is now. And there was a, there was a wonderful New York post article that came out years ago, which said that uh, Elon Musk is a total fraud. And I just, oh, I wow. stood up and I stood and applauded. So when you, by the way, when we look at this shot, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm his age and I knew software guys like this all day long. You can't tell me that this guy here in the photo that couldn't even scrounge up, I think 40 million bucks back then is now quote unquote, the richest man to ever walk the earth. Now, first off <laughs> the, there, it, it's like, okay, but that's not, that's not even, that's pub. There's publicly rich and then there's privately rich. Right. Yeah. The publicly rich people are the people you see in the news. The privately rich, those are probably European families that do not yeah. care about money because money is irrelevant to them. Yeah. Meaning yeah. The, they don't even count the digits because who the hell cares? Yeah. Um, but real quick, they, they were talking about all the stuff he, because he, all he does is says he's going to do something and then people get stuck in their head. And then later it's like, oh, yeah, he did that, didn't he? It's like, no. No, no, no. It's like, no, he, like he said, oh, I'm going to trade a, create a, a super plane from the United States to, to China in like two hours. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do an, the underwater, the underground bullet train from where you are to San Francisco. Right. That was that was supposed to be a supposed to be a thing. I'm going to save those kids with my super submarine that were in that cave. Mm-hmm. I'm going to help out Puerto Rico after the hurricane with my special generators. He did none of those things. None yeah. of those things. And so and and even when the twi- it's like, yeah, but he he bought, you know, he 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 owns. Well, a couple of years from now, kids are going to be saying, "Yeah, but he started Twitter." It's like, no, no, he didn't. He was forced yeah, he to buy Twitter. it. He was forced to buy it because he he said something dumb, like, "Yeah, I think fifty dollars a share is a great price. I would think about yeah. buying it." And yeah. It's like, no, no, that's legally binding nowadays. If you're if you're super super rich, and his lawyer said, "Yeah, it's cheaper to actually buy it and destroy it." Uh, well, well hey, he's doing a great job at it. <laughs> and he didn't. And he didn't. Yeah. Sorry, look. But he didn't start Tesla Motors, all right? There was a Tesla dealership in Boulder, Colorado, where I lived for years before he came wow. along and bought it. For years. Wow. There's three people that drive me nuts. It's like when they say, it's like, oh, no, Elon started Tesla. No, he didn't. Mark Cuban founded the Dallas Ma- Mavericks. No, he did not. Yeah. He bought the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. Uh, and Ray yeah. Kroc didn't start McDonald's. It was the McDonald's brothers that started McDonald's. Wow. The, the wow. movie, if you haven't watched it, I know I'm rambling. If you haven't no, you watched it, watch Watch the founder with uh, Michael Keaton. If you've never seen great it, movie. It's about the, oh, it's a great movie. It, which was great you understand movie. that the only reason McDonald's exists today is because his lawyer, Ray Kroc's lawyer, came up with the idea. It's like, yeah, all you have to do is black blackmail the um, uh, the uh, um, the franchise people. All you do wow. is you, say you mm-hmm. they don't own the land. That's all you do. You yeah. say you you give them the lease. They can do whatever they want. But if they don't follow your instructions exactly. You pull the lease because you own wow. the land, and, wow. and they, he goes. You're, he goes. You're not in the food business. You're in the real estate business, and that's that's how McDonald's. You know, they're one of the. I think the biggest private holder of real estate in the world. People don't get it. Sure. Yep. Wow. Buy the freaking fries. Anyway. Wow. Wow. Okay, I've got I've got one more flat Earth question that I've been super curious about to hear wow. from you know somebody that actually knows. Okay, so 
I spent years in food business and really got into molecular, molecular gastronomy. So one thing that, you know, I've always noticed, whether it's bubbles, whether it's like spherifications that we would do, everything is round. Everything is spherical. And when you yep. look at how surface tension works, surface tension is said to mimic the surf, you know, mimic the outside force of whatever, you know, gravitational force, of course, being the, the earth that is there. So from your standpoint, why is it that, Surface tension always, always, 100% of the time shows itself to be spherical and never flat like the Earth or snow globe-like. Does that, does that question make sense? Yeah, no, no, yeah, it does. And I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone's ever – gold star for asking a question I don't think I've ever gotten. Don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, you know, why it is that way, I, I'd respond with why is a nickel bigger than a dime. I have no freaking idea. It shouldn't be, but it is. Um, the Let me address the gravity side of it, which is uh, every scientist in the world will tell you that they can't, they don't know exactly what gravity is, right? It's it's still a theory, but it's a, it's a very consistent theory, very persistent, which is um, they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does, that, you know, that it's a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. When it comes to surface tension, Yes, surface tension, I would imagine, I mean, surface tension, if you take a drop of water and you put it on your table right now, yeah, that looks like a dome, right? And then if you right. if you bend it in air, which is, by the way, how they make um, buckshot, if you probably, yeah. I actually got a chance to, to do, install software at a um, at the Remington Ammunition Factory in Blytheville, Arkansas, oh, uh, and they were showing me this old school way of how they made buckshot, which is they take molten lead and they just drop it from a high, high altitude you know, like several hundred feet up. And when yeah. it falls, it turns into a sphere. And when it lands, it's cooled. Uh, and it's like, but oh, yeah, wow. surface, t- surface tension, wow. when you go all the way around, yeah, it would be a sphere because you'd surface tension in 360 degrees on, on all access points. So yeah, sure. Um, but it what why, why does, does that make it easier to believe in the globe? I guess, but only because you're comparing spheres to spheres. At that stage, you, you're saying, well, you know, if it's a, if a if a if a drop of water that is falling, if it's well, again, provided it's not big enough, because remember, the surface yeah. tension only goes so far. You take mm-hmm. you take a gallon of water, right. and you pour it. It's not going to be a sphere going on the way on the way down. Um, and since we can't replicate it in a lab, I know there are some people that even even if you're doing, and I don't think I don't know if they've ever tried this with any large amount of water. You you know what the vomit comet is. You know, the plane, mm-hmm. so you haul out, yeah, you haul out the plane and then you go, you nosedive and it simulates no gravity. And by simulate, I mean, it's a rough simulation really because you're just falling without wind. I'd love to see like three gallons of water, you know, but, but you, I don't know if you poured three gallons of water into that, would it eventually turn into a sphere? Maybe. I don't know. Well, it wouldn't be together necessarily because, you know, the, there's a, if you, pour it out of if you even if you've got you know no wind no wind resistance still if gravity is going to act on it and there's going to be a, a secondary force pushing on it so right. you know also all surface tension is is there's no other secondary force and something gets pushed into its smallest possible combination you know its smallest right. possible size right so i don't know but that that's just one that, I, that i've always been super curious about because i know on the other hand you know the common scientific explanation is that you know when we look at pretty much anything in the world that isn't created through you know a process of erosion or any kind of outside force it all comes out rounded and it does that because we live on a round earth we live on a spherical earth so gravity itself will always mimic mimic spherical you know will mimic the sphere of the earth itself you can't again you're, you're reaching there because i mean yes you could say you can't necessarily say that it's happening because it's on spherical earth. You can say that it's happening because of some sort of gravitational force, but can that same sort of gravitational force exist on some sort of flat earth like this? Sure. Hmm. Why the heck not? I mean, I just say that it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down. Yeah. So okay. it, it's not, it's not for me, it's not that much different. Uh, yeah. until we okay. can, until, we, until we can create anti-gravity in a lab, it's the, the argument's not going to go m- really one way or the other, but I get yeah. you. I, I get, I get yeah. what you're saying. That's good. 
I like it. By yeah, way, that's one I'm all, I've always been really curious about. That's good. Seriously, I am impressed. You, you, you've got stuff that I have not heard. That's <laughs> hey, oh, wow. Y'all hear it from hey, Carolina I'll Ballistics it. in the day no, 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 no. <laughs> We got <laughs> Mark Sargent. Hey. Seriously, I, I, I have done this for a I've done a lot of these things that I have not yeah. heard. That those you, You've got more than one. That's good. Wow. That's good. That's Which awesome. also means, oh, by the way, good. that you've been thinking about a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, I, I personally, I stay open to being wrong. Let me let me throw one more out at you because I lo- I know our community loves bringing up density, mm-hmm. which is you know the be, in addition to in, in addition to something like like some sort of gravitational whoop, don't want to drop this uh, and some sort of gravitational force there would also be uh, density which means that heavier things you, you guys have seen the 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 beakers where you put a like a, a thin liquid and a heavier liquid and heavier you know. Mm-hmm. The, you can it'll separate naturally based on the the, yeah. the the density of it, and if there is air pressure, the, you know, again, if there's some sort of dome, then, then air yeah. pressure actually means something. The term, so d- d- does that also mean that density plays into it? I believe so because, again, if you take hydrogen or helium or whatever, something that's lighter than the, than air, right, less dense, it's going to go up. Um, the other thing, and I know people like throwing this out there. Eh, we'll see if it works w- with you which is you take a beach ball or whatever it is, a soccer ball, and you put it under water, right? And you let go of it. What happens? It pops up. Did it pop up because it was going against gravity or was it because it was less dense than the water around it? It was less dense. Mm-hmm. I, I think that there's a, it's a combination of the two. I, I think they both play into it. So that's, that's my take. Good stuff, though. I like mm-hmm. it. That's, a, that's a good explanation. I appreciate it. Gives, it, gives it. Me something to, it gives me something to think about it. Interesting. But yeah, um, it's a uh, you know we're a, um, a firearm organization that right. um, uh, we specialize in like home training and stuff like that. And and even when it comes to, uh, I think I mentioned it to you um, a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the Coriolis effect right. um, in connection with firing from north to south. Um, right. When you fire, especially over a, a, a far distance. Um, the bullet has a tendency to 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 sway to the right, um, just because we have to take in consideration that the the Earth is we perceive the Earth is moving. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. um, are we talking about the, the? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're so good. um yeah um like when you fire around, um the bullet will literally shift off to the right, especially when you're firing from uh, north to south. What uh what do um flat earthers uh, say in connection with um with that? With with that, I defer to every military guy. And again, I'm not knocking what what you guys mm-hmm. think you see. Um, however, there was something that w- did it come out this year. I think it was the the record, uh, s- um, long distance shot sniper yeah. sniper shot with a with a modified fifty yeah. cal, and it took a whole bunch of shots to hit the target. But I think it was four miles. Four point something miles, and it was a lob shot, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're not going to get anything, anything straight for, yeah. for, for more, four miles. Yeah. But, but at no point did they have to take into account any sort of Coriolis effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I've got a list. If you guys want to have some fun with it, and again, yeah. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking yeah, yeah. snipers and long distance shots. Yeah. But the the list that I have on my channel, and these guys came out a long time ago. Um, everyone from uh, howitzers to tanks to missiles to subs to mm-hmm. you name it, they've all said the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, we've heard about the uh, the, the curvature Coriolis. of the Earth, yeah, and the and the Coriolis effect combination yeah. of the both because we never work them into firing solutions ever. Wow. It's just something that they it's like they said we've seen the tables. In mm-hmm. fact, some of the military guys have come out and said it's like, look, do you know how more much more difficult war would be. If all of a sudden you had to break out a table that said, oh, yeah, by the way, not only, you know, we have to redirect our cannons. Mm-hmm. Not only are, you know, do you have to have, you know, distance and windage and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but now you have to factor in what, what the Coriolis effect is depending on your location. Remember, because yeah. like the, the, the effect is supposedly different no matter where you are. So at the equator, yeah. it's a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. But up here, it's, well, in Los Angeles would be less than 700 miles an hour. Wow. which so you really have to so then you'd have to make the adjustments accordingly and they go well yeah we never we never do it wow. so again Interesting. I, I i i trust your 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 
what you're saying, but at the same mm -hmm. time, are you seeing it? Or are you wanting to see it? Or, or is it something you know, else? Hey, going you, on you never know. know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, uh, we were just talking about that social programming, you know? Hey, who knows? <laughs> well, well, here, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one more really quick, which is, mm -hmm. again, I'm not I'm not picking on you guys at all. I, you know, I respect. Yeah, By the way, good. I. Um, I, I love the fact that you guys are doing tactical stuff and who knows, hopefully you won't have to use it anytime soon. I'm looking at, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Wednesday, yeah. the, um, which is, um, where, where the, the, or the George Orwell thing, where is mm -hmm. when you reinforce something enough times, people will believe it just because that that's what they want to see. It's the five yeah. lights, four lights argument. And the, the, the one that I throw out there, and I know the trolls hate me for this, mm -hmm. which is they they say oh i've seen the curvature from an airplane i've seen the curvature from an airplane i've seen the curvature. really have you i go mm -hmm. because neil tyson who who went on about the red bull jump if you remember that from some years yeah, ago yeah yeah the red yeah. bull goes up there it's like we're on the edge of space and he was really angry about that because it's not the edge of space it was 130,000 feet and they showed this wide angle curvature you know the camera was this wide angle curvature it's like oh okay so the whole world mm -hmm. is the size of arizona totally makes sense and he goes, he goes, it's dishonest. He goes, nobody can see the curvature of 130,000 feet. It's absolutely flat at 130,000 feet. And yet I still have people that email me. So, no, no, I've seen the curvature. They've seen the curvature from planes and from balloons and from mountaintops. Mm -hmm. And some people have said they've even seen it from like a hill. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no, I've seen it the side to side, side to side curvature. It's like, well, have you? Or did you want to see it? There's yeah. the difference. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, um, wow. They, oh, sorry, gave one us a little more, lot to think about. Look, look, you guys shoot, right? You guys shoot. Yeah. Well, sorry, one more thing I got to throw out there. It's like, do, do you have any scopes that, that have, have that uh, that Coriolis knob on it? Uh, I don't think there's a there's a knob uh, to uh, compensate for the Coriolis effect. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no. Look, dude, I'm a small arms nut. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like the when even when the Barretts came out, so when CNN does a thing, it's like, oh, I you know when a sniper comes on CNN and says, mm -hmm. oh, I took a I took a shot at a mile, and I had to count for the 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 curvature of the Coriolis. I'm going, really? Did you now? Wait, wait, tell me, tell me how I wait. Mm -hmm. You're good. What what else you got? <laughs> now, now I would just build out of curiosity from listening on that question. Yes. So outside of bullets, like I guess the biggest way that we usually see the Cori Coriolis effect come about is, you know, hurricanes, cyclones, stuff like that. And, you know, especially as we see, you know, a warm southern wind, you know, getting caught toward the, you know, toward the equatorial center of the earth and because of the earth's rotation becoming a hurricane. So right. what what's the uh, what's what accounts for that as so far as uh, spin versus cyclone and, and a hurricane? Right. Right. Don't know. I don't know that one at all. I mean, I, I'm just going to pin, I'm going to pin that one on God because it's just part of the system. Um, what I will throw in. So the, the question for the listeners is because a lot of people probably don't know that cyclones spin in a different direction than hurricanes spin. Yes. And, you know, cl clockwise versus, versus counterclockwise. And I am trying to visualize hurricanes. Is hurricanes hurricanes clockwise? clockwise. Yeah. Well, yeah, hurricanes are clockwise. You got it. Like, well, I had a 50 50 chance. So, um, <laughs> but, but to, to, I want to add to that, which is, um, we'll throw in something simple that, that people have heard over the years, which is um, toilets and sinks drain in the opposite direction. And you know, we've all heard, uh, hell, the Simpsons did an episode on it where, you know, the toilet's flush in, in the opposite direction, whether if you're in the Southern Hemisphere or not. And that's absolutely a myth. There's a wonderful video out there called um, from a big channel. Science Channel, of course, and he hates us, called um, Smarter Every Day. And uh, I don't even know how many millions he's got up to now. But he did. He, he wanted to know that test. And so he set up two waiting pools, right? One in the Southern Hemisphere, one in the, in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, with a central drain, built them absolutely identical with his friend to where there was they, they left him sitting. There's no movement on the water at all. And when they pulled the plugs, right? And I don't know if it was simultaneously, but it was pretty damn close. They drained so incredibly gradually in one way or the other that he's going he's going i don't know what people are talking about with this whole toilet we're immediately flushing in the direction it's just the way the the jets are formed that's it so when you go into if you if you want to have some fun sorry two follow-up one is if you want to have some fun go to the equator and uh, go to the tourist traps where they literally again it's a it's a great gimmick 
where you sit next they have a line they literally have an equator line right they have one side it's like look the water spins this way and and you jump to the other side of the line look the water spins the other way and it's like no yeah. it is absolutely sleight of hand it's like you're talking about six feet i go six feet you would not even there wouldn't be a change that if even if that was true but to that point one more one more real quick do i believe that uh because you might bring this up the star trails at the equator that this part is true I, I firmly believe it's true, even though I've never seen it myself, which is you could take a you could take a photo on the equator line of the star trails. Right. And you will see the split. You will see the time lapse uh, where they will go in one direction on one side of the line and one direction on the other side of the line. Uh, d- could that be done on a spherical Earth? Yes. Could, or could it be done on a simulation of a spherical Earth? Yes, it can. We uh, I, I come from the software world. We can do that all day long. Uh, so for, for me, again, the sky is just a projection. It is just part of the illusion. And if people that come back and they say, well, you know, God doesn't have to do that. You know, God created a whole solar system. They're like, yeah, but that's a lot of effort for just to do it. It's like, look, 99.9% of people believe the illusion. That's what you go with. You don't have to build the whole damn universe. And I'm not trying to be blasphemous here. Um, Carl Sagan, you remember him from years ago. There's a wonderful mm-hmm. line. I mean, he even knew at some point he's going, he, he always thought the universe was confusing because he goes, man, it is so empty because it's, a, he goes, it's an awful waste of space. And it, it always bothered him. And it's like, yeah, yeah. The flat earth changes all that. It's not a waste of space. Why wouldn't it be efficient? Right. There you go. Mm. Gotcha. Sorry. I know I hit a lot of different things there, but you, you kind of get where my head's at. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. You're great, man. So like on on the on the subject of of yep. like um nature and and um like our existence um yeah. especially like when you look into like stethoscopes um how do flat earthers ex- um like explain why everything we look at inside the universe is circular um like you, you mean like into- everything like like what? planets and yeah. meteors and yeah. stuff like that the all right the easy answer and i'm not trying to i'm not trying to use this as a cop out but nah, again know. if if you're creating the illusion that i i believe that art imitates life which is when we build planetariums why don't we suspend why don't we spend huge amounts of money and make models of jupiter and mars and venus up there and and create this massive you know the buildings could be eight times as large and we could we could we could do it all with mechanical processes mm-hmm. it's like why why we can we can project it up there just as easy and for a fraction of the cost yeah. so when they, but it is an old argument which is if all the other planets are spherical why why is our you know why are we flat it's like no you're looking at it the wrong way why what makes you think they're spherical you're you're not there nobody's there you know mm-hmm. until and it's an argument i used in one of my last interviews which is look until you have your own spaceship which we're never going to get Mm-hmm. that you don't know for sure um in fact the the challenge i've always put at people which is how do you know okay two two quick ones mm-hmm. one is um george orwell where he was walking around he wasn't a flat earther you know he was the guy that wrote 1984 and he said he goes it was right he, he wrote this in 1946 he goes when you go on the street and you ask anyone how they know the world is a globe they say well what are you talking about we know the given we it, it is known it's like really how do you know and he was talking about how people will believe science no matter what they tell them because they just immediately assume it's like, oh, that guy in the lab coat is, is smarter yeah. than you. He, he's What's interesting is yeah. how did everybody in the world know in 1946, 12 years before NASA was even founded, that the yeah. world was a globe? There's no space program. How did you know? And, it, and again, that's what frustrates people. is it's not, And once it dawns on you that it's not that you know, you were told. And there's a, there's a big difference there. NASA... You don't know. You don't know the 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 the, the world is a globe or anything in the shape of the globe. You were told this by a very small group. By the way, who is U.S. military? NASA's Department mm-hmm. of Defense always has been. Yeah, yeah they wear white uniforms. They don't carry guns. And they smile for the camera. That's mm-hmm. very nice. But they're still military. They were built yeah. on the still burning embers of the Nazi V two program. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's how the whole thing started. You bring Werner von Braun and some of the scientists over there, some of their old rockets. You start working yep. on it. That's true. And then you tell, again, you clean it up, make all the rockets white, everything shiny and happy. And next thing you know, they're the face of science. Yeah. So for people to say, well, you know, just because you know, the planets look spherical doesn't make 
you know, our place spherical. It's just, again, it's part of the illusion. It's all it is. Wow. 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 Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is one I've always had a question on. All right. Yeah. So how, you know how like you go to the beach, right? Right. Um, and theoretically when you're at the beach, you're at sea level, right? Right. Right. How come we can't see clear across the beach onto like, you know, the other That's side of the beach? Yep. Okay. So the, uh, the, the extrapolation of that question is, mm -hmm. uh, cause people have asked me, it's okay. Okay. From California, why can't you see Japan? Why can't you see France from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because remember, mm -hmm. it's the highest place on earth. So why can't you mm -hmm. see it? The reason is, unfortunately, is because of our eyesight, which mm -hmm. is we, what we're breathing in now, right? Isn't nothing. It's 99.99% transparent. It's mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. It's 80, 20. This is some trace gases, but I'm just going to round to those. It's 80, it's 80, 20, four to one. That gets thick that you're basically breathing in a thin version of water mm -hmm. plane planes don't really fly they're swimming by yeah. the way which is a whole other <laughs> oh, thing wow. it, it, it's weird when you think about it but it's true which is which is Man. a whole other thing which is so uh, we'll, we'll we'll come back to the, the plane thing in a second which is it compounds over time so when you're looking off into the distance that 99.9 .9 transparency becomes 80 becomes 70 becomes 60. it's just a thin version of water um, it's mm -hmm. the same reason why you, if you're scuba diving, why if you're down even 200 feet in the in the uh, high noon, that you mm -hmm. cannot see the sun, right? Mm -hmm. And if a whale is only, I don't know, 300 feet away, you've seen this in all the, the scuba videos where it just disappears. It's got a perfectly mm -hmm. white belly and it just disappears. Why? Because you can't see through that much water. Mm -hmm. But when it but it brings up to a, something I've been I've been working on recently, which is yeah. plane, which is think about this. Again, this is this isn't hard physics, right? When you're walking, your feet are pushing off against the ground. When you're swimming, your arms are swimming against the water. And planes, their propeller is pushing against the air, right? But when you're in a rocket and you're in the vacuum of space, what are you pushing off against? Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing to push off against. Meaning, there's no there's no medium. There's no there's nothing there to push. Off. There's not even fog to push off against. Uh, when I say a plane is swimming, it's literally swimming. Um, a plane propeller is very similar to a boat propeller, mm -hmm. which is why planes can only go up so far because eventually it gets thinner and thinner and there's less and less to push off against. And eventually the, the, the planes, in fact, helicopters are even worse. Helicopters mm -hmm. can only go up so far and then they're like, the, the propellers don't work anymore. Drones, mm -hmm. same sort of thing. Drones don't work in, in real high altitude and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Um, short, short version, the, the atmosphere. It, it's what, again, by the way, sorry, one more thing. <laughs> the, 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 when it comes to vacuums, th this is how easily they can fool you, right? A vacuum, if you take a room, right? Like this room right here, room I'm in. I could just tell you, right? It's a vacuum. How are you going to know any different? A vacuum looks identical to what's around me right now. The difference is that you wouldn't be able to hear me because there's nothing, you know, um, you could do a YouTube video, uh, take a bell and you put it in a vacuum chamber. It doesn't make any sound. You, you take all the air out. There's no, there, the sound can't go anywhere because it has to travel through something. So when the astronauts say they're in a vacuum chamber, which by the way, you can hardly ever find any of those videos out anywhere. They can just say they're in a vacuum chamber, but they don't even like to fake it. It was one of those challenges that I put out there years ago. Oh my God, years ago. And I said, I go, you want to know how to convince me that the, the, the space program is real? Give me, loan, loan me one of your spacesuits and put me in a vacuum chamber and pull the switch. Tell me how I don't die. And mm -hmm. I can, and not only that, I can bring $4 worth of materials in with me and I can prove whether it's a vacuum chamber or not. And it's not like you can just put me in a thing. It's like, well, you're in a vacuum. Oh, no, no, no. First off, the bell won't make any noise. Um, hmm. tap water boils at room temperature in a vacuum and uh, you take a, a, a balloon and put a single breath of air into it and it'll just expand, expand until it explodes in a vacuum. So, sorry, wow. I ramble. That's a, that's a, that's a hell of a oh, challenge. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I would really was hoping somebody would do it. Now, the, the caveat to that was I would really hope a scientist would put his money where his mouth was and go in with me, right? Yeah. You know, we have his own spacesuit because I wouldn't really want to die alone. Yeah. But it's like, but the, <laughs> the, re, the reason why I bring that up is it's like, look, I go the spacesuit, right? The the backpack of the spacesuit. I go, tell me what is in that backpack that stops a vac the the vacuum of space? 
Mm -hmm. I go, tell me. I go, look, I'm a pretty clever problem solver. I can't even come up with a fictional way of, of, of making that work. And you guys are saying, oh, no, we've had that technology since the 60s. It's like, no, no, you haven't. <laughs> no, no, even now I can't even think of how you could do it. And you're telling me you did this during the analog years of the 60s? Yeah. No. We um there's um uh, there's this guy and I, and I'm sure you're familiar with who he is Mark and he he actually um done a lot especially as of recently when they decided to reveal to the American people that they have uh what's it called uh, unidentified flying objects and sure. IUDs and all and is what is what is it? IUAs was it called uh unidentified um like uh, they were coming over the the flying over the ocean right sure in connection oh, with oh, alien, the, the underwater alien. UFOs. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. In connection with this whole um, alien, um, um, I guess I don't want to call it a craze. Um, but one of the big things that he mentioned was that um, a lot of the technology that we see today, um, they had 20 years ago. So like right now we have like, you know, smartphones, we have flat inch TVs and all this other technology. Well, military that, gets it first, sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it a lot of the technology that we have was already like experimented with and then used at some level at a mili military operation. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, um, what do you think about that? That the possibility of alien life forms, um, and what does that mean for like the flat Earth sure. um, uh, movement? First off, I do do I believe in ships, uh, uh, unidentified objects? Yeah, I do. I, I believe in them all day long. Oh my god, I could spend so much time on this, but I'll give you the, the highlights. Um, the greatest UFO sighting of all time wasn't Roswell. It was in 1899, Texas. Uh, you guys can look it up. There's a wonderful wiki page on it. It was the 1561 Nuremberg event, wow. um, where two giant space armadas did battle over a clear blue sky in Nuremberg, Germany, and then the third wow. faction came in and, and broke it up. Wow. Um, I know. I personally got into it before I even got into flat earth. I, I watched this one conspiracy video where uh, a British guy at the end, he's going, you want to see some weird stuff, man? You have to get some night vision binoculars, start looking at the sky. And that's going, Oh, that sounds like a wager. I'm totally doing that. <laughs> so I, I did, I looked around and I found that there's some really good stuff out that, that now for like hundred bucks, you can buy some decent mm -hmm. night vision, but I was buying like the $500 Russian version mm -hmm. with, because you want something in five power or higher. And I remember watching the sky and it first, when you first look, you're like, what the, I mean, it's just crawling with stuff, absolutely freaking mm -hmm. crawling with stuff. And they're really, they're way, way up there, way up there. I mean, hundred thousand plus feet. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, the, the sky is full of satellites, right? And, and you're looking, it's like, oh, this is boring. This is satellites, right? And then all of a sudden you see a few of them just stop, right? They're flying along and then they slow down. They just stop. And it's like they're like they're looking for directions or something, and then like they'll hang a hard left or a hard right and go ballistic. Yeah. And if you know anything about satellites, it's like and so so do I believe there's stuff up there? Yes. Yeah. Do I think they're from Mars or Venus or Jupiter? No. You think no, they're from not. like past the ice wall? Um, Possibly. I, I really wanted to delve into the the the, the belief of the be life beyond the ice wall because sure. I think that's like one of the uh, most interesting aspects of like the whole flat Earth um, uh, uh, like uh, belief system is sure. the, the the idea that there's um, societies outside of of what we know as sure. humanity. I think that's really cool. I, and by the way, let me I, uh, let, let's delve into that. But be, mm -hmm. before I do that, really quick, which is um. Uh, if you guys don't know how UFOs work, uh, the the common theory is, and I, I believe it, is they run off a, a completely different engine, mm -hmm. which is um, a unified field engine. The the mythical mm -hmm. engine that, that Einstein supposedly knew and was never going to tell our military because he knew what you, what you could do with it. It would make the atomic weapon program look like like a freaking BB gun. Wow. Um, which is it's basically the old science fiction movies, which is a force field. So if you can create some sort of force field around your ship, you can bypass any sort of g-force and therefore you could travel at, at unbelievable speeds and not just on unbelievable speeds you could ignore aerodynamics um you could travel in just about any direction any acceleration level you go from zero to five thousand miles an hour in, in in a second if you want it it's not going to affect you in the slightest uh -huh. and because it's inside the force field you're not going to hear anything because the force field would also bounce back sound waves so it could be really loud inside a, inside a ufo 
you're never going to know because the the field itself uh, is a big sound dampener and on top of it you can use it to 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 travel um underwater wow oh wow because yeah, why, yeah why, i think why, I, why, I think i remember hearing about that why wouldn't now you wouldn't be able to go uh, as fast but who knows i don't know what the speed constraints are underwater for yeah. various reasons but i've heard stories of of ufos underwater that are going several hundred miles an hour wow. very very fast however you would get yeah, be it's pretty risky down there because you're hitting a lot of stuff potentially i mean wow. you know you don't want to kill all the fish life if you can help it. <laughs> um, seriously that'd be, that'd be bad i i will send you if i get a chance to, after as soon as i'm done with this yeah. i will send you my favorite video of a ufo yeah. and it does that not get dope. much press is from oak bay uh, up just north of here in, in canada and where and i knew exactly what was happening where is yeah. because they're flying around all the time wow. but here's here's the thing they're cloaked most of the time for obvious reasons right you mm -hmm. don't want to spook the 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 population that's down here i mean you could yeah. you get yourself in a whole bunch of trouble because people say well why is not a ufo landed in the middle of indiana and just start it's like what you're gonna get out start taking selfies and and start signing autographs and shaking hands <laughs> no you would screw up so much stuff so you you that's it's part of the rules you can, yeah. there's certain things you can't do um which goes into sorry real quick but i'll, I'll talk about that sighting in a sec which mm -hmm. is people um uh, I think that, that they're not, again, they're not from Mars or Jupiter or Venus. Could they be outside the ice wall? Yes. But they're older versions of us. Wow. Meaning they're just, um, you know, I think every civilization gets to a certain point and then they have to move on like upperclassmen, right? You don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. We got, another, <laughs> we got another class coming in. Yeah. But they're also not allowed to mess with the general population. Now, yes, you want to pick off a couple guys in a fishing boat or some drunk campers. <laughs> Or something, you know, somebody out on the fringe. I think that's yeah. allowed, right? Yeah. You have so many, so many a year. It's like a catch and release program, mm -hmm. but it's. I think it's loosely, loosely monitored. Um, but the, this one thing up in Oak Bay, I knew exactly what was happening. It was twilight, right? It's twilight on a on a on a crystal clear Canadian night, and but mm -hmm. the sun, you know, sun had gone down, but you could still see things pretty well. But the sun had gone down, obviously, probably 30, 40 minutes earlier. And the ship that was flying, I don't know, not even, barely even a thousand feet, maybe, just starts just, just pulling around like a Sunday driver, just kind of coming over the bay. And the people in the sailboats, you know, because people in Canada, they're just like sitting there drinking and some of them are filming stuff and like, what the hell is that thing, right? Absolutely whisper quiet, ugly, ugly ship. Oh my God, it was ugly. <laughs> um, it, was not a, it was not an attractive car in the slightest. Wow. I mean, it looked like, like a Boba Fett ship. There, wow. See, there's my Star Wars thing for you. Ready? There it is. There's my one Star Wars. <laughs> uh, it looked like Boba Fett's ship. Seriously, uh, you'll you'll see when I send it to you. And, um, but so do I think that there? Yeah, that is one of the big questions. Which is, yeah. are there other civilizations that live outside of here? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of outside of this barrier, mm -hmm. and do they have access? I don't know. I could I could go either way, but I would like to think that whatever you see flying around in here um is basically in here with us now could that mean that there's another dome outside of, of this dome and there's there's certain access points where you're not allowed like we're not allowed to go past this but again yeah. we tried to blow through this back in the late 50s and early 60s uh with really uh, with our biggest guns ever and we couldn't do it the us and the soviet union both we both couldn't get through this thing now do i think that ships have potentially have access to come in and out sure Sure, why not? I mean, it's again, it, as long as you follow um, the what's the Star Trek reference, the the Prime Directive, where it's oh, like, man, do not you a Star Trek fan too, man. I oh am, man, I you in the right group fan. today. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, make sense. When, when the Star Trek movie, I know people didn't like the second movie as much, mm -hmm. but when when they were down on that planet, it's like we make sure the natives don't see the ship or don't see you, right? And as soon as the as soon as they took off and the the natives saw the Enterprise, it's like they completely burned down their old religion and they started drawing the Enterprise ship, and that's who they were going to worship to. Wow. That that's what the Prime Directive is all about. You you will influence the the natural process. I mean, come on, if a if a giant golden spaceship landed in the beach of uh, you know down in Huntington Beach somewhere right you'd have two schools of people that would show up one would be all the science geeks right they'd be like oh see they do look like the people from avatar right yeah and the other people would be like we must worship the blue people start building <laughs> right now just tear down houses start building churches right that's and then that's you got that third them. group of people that's trying to have sex with them <laughs> <laughs> yeah the groupies <laughs> they're the groupies 
Oh, All right, up. Mark, Mark, yo, we this has to happen again. This has been one of the most funnest interviews I think I've had in quite what? some time. This has what? been great. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Brother Sean, thank you for coming through, helping us thank out you, on this Sean. interview. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I'm, not gonna to hold, you. I'm not going to hold it against you, the Star Wars thing in the background. I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. They just all happen to be on there, but I'm with you, OT for life. And and th- thank you and thank and thank you by the way for coming up with, with good questions. Seriously, yeah. it's not often that I that I get questions. It's like wow, I haven't really thought about that. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey we all awesome. in this together. Hey guys, if you made it this far, you are the real one. Thank you so much for checking us out. Peace, love, and blessings, guys. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.